This is Dwayne from Discount Pools Direct. A lot of you customers call in asking uh, about winterizing the pool, so hopefully I'm going to show you some steps today of what I do in closing the pool that will answer most of your questions. It's pretty simple and uh, you know usually it takes a couple hours um, from start to finish. It helps if you have uh, one or two people helping you out, especially when you got to put the winter cover on. So uh, first thing that we end up doing is uh, making sure that the pool is clean. You want to make sure, I've waited a little bit late this year uh, here in Virginia, the oak leaves have started falling. So you want to make sure you get all the leaves and debris out of the pool to, uh, because it, that can be a source of uh, a food for algae and you don't want to pull your cover off and have algae in your pool uh, in the springtime. So last night, I actually got all the leaves out with the leaf net uh, off the surface and off the bottom of the pool and added my uh, winter chemicals. Now, you know, there are a lot of different winter chemical kits on the market. This is one that I happen to use. Uh, it's usually based on the size of the pool. Uh, I think pretty much, you know, up to 15,000 gallons. Then it goes 20,000. This one is 30,000. If you don't know, always go more, you know, because the more chemicals you can use in wintertime, uh, the better. You don't want to use a smaller uh, kit and not have enough to last throughout the winter and early spring. So this one treats up to 30,000 gallons. My pool actually holds probably about 17,000 gallons. But, but again, so, you know, in these kits normally there are about three different things uh, that you want to use uh, or that come with it. You know, you get a stain and scale, you know, uh, to help, you know, because the water sitting and steel, you know, for several months all through the winter. Uh, you get a non-chlorine shock uh, that comes with it. And then also you get a pH buffer. Uh, that's usually all, you know, that you need. You know, most of the time when I open my pool up in the spring, it's crystal clear if I use one of these kits. So, you know, I added the chemicals last night and let my pump and filter run and circulate the chemicals. I know on the bags it'll tell you to circulate for an hour, but if your pump's not big enough uh, to push the volume of water and turn your water over enough, it's still not, you know, getting the chemicals, uh, you know, diluted in the pool water like it should be. So, you know, I recommend, you know, 12 to 18 hours at least let your uh, pool pump run uh, with the chemicals in it. So, all right, so after it's clean, after you add your chemicals, next thing you're gonna do is, is drain your water level down. You wanna drain your water level down below your skimmer. And the way that you do that is you just put your fitting, uh, your multiple valve on backwash and you can drain it down quick. You can cut the pump on or you can just leave the pump off and just let gravity feed uh, the pump away, I mean the water away from uh, the pool. And it'll, it'll stop once it gets to the bottom of that uh, skimmer right there, it'll actually, you know, the water will stop flowing. Alright, after your water level's right, then what you want to do, if you don't already have one, is purchase a winter plug. You know, it's a PVC inch and a half, just tell them you need it for an above ground pool, or an inch and a half uh, winter plug for above ground pool. This plug uh, will actually uh, go into your re your return fitting or your jet uh, on your pool and so I've already taken this return fitting your eyeball and screwed it off the inside of the pool wall and then I'll turn around and actually screw this in and what that'll do that shuts the flow of the water off coming to your sand filter um, afterwards. Now after I drain the water level down get the return fitting where I need it to be, uh, then, I mean, the winter plug where I need it to be, I'll go ahead and, and remove two of my hoses, one where it's connected uh, to the um, pool side right here, and then where the skimmer comes into the pump, I'll go ahead and disconnect that. You know, the next step, you know, different pumps and wet ends have, uh, some have one plug, some have two. I don't think I've ever seen one with three, but you'll need to find all your drain plugs uh, this particular pool has two. It's got one on your pump basket. It's got one on your, your wet end, uh, which is a black plastic uh, piece that, uh, where your uh, impeller is in between the pump basket and the pump. I'll pull that drain plug. Uh, after I get my drain plugs pulled there, I'll pull the drain plug at the bottom of the sand filter. Let that drain. Um, so after you've got everything drained, after you've got your hoses disconnected, you got it blocked off right here. 
uh, the last step is actually getting the winter cover on the pool and you know we'll take a quick break and get set up and uh, show you the easiest way I found to put a winter cover on a pool. Okay just to let you uh, know about a few tools that you may need when you're uh, closing your pool up is you might want a screw gun with a 5 16 nut driver or just a, a hand nut driver to take the clamps loose from your hoses. Um, you'll need a wrench to take one of your drain plugs off. Mine just happens to be 11 16 Sometimes it's 5 8 uh, so you can check the size of that before you get started. Um, a pair of small channel locks um, or pliers and to get one of the lower drain plugs off and get it started. And if you need help in getting your the big nut that's on the bottom of the sand filter tank, then you'll need a big pair of channel locks uh, to, uh, to get that loose. All right, now we've drained the water down and we've just put in our winter plug, so now we're going to remove our hoses. So you have two of them that you need to remove. One is going to come off your skimmer that goes into your pump basket, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, the next one is the one that comes off of your return up here to the top of the multiport valve. Now we've got those off. Okay, next thing you want to do is take your drain plugs, uh, one off the pump basket right here and we've got one at the bottom of the wet end. Now it's really important these have o-rings on the end of these. Sometimes when you pull the plug off the o-ring stays inside of the pump basket. So after the water stops running out we'll check and make sure that, we, that we've got the o-ring. You definitely want to put that on the screw. Take it inside in the winter so it doesn't get brittle in the spring and kind of deteriorate so, so it causes a leak. Now, sometimes if there's not enough space up under here, you might need to get a, a pair of pliers or a channel, uh, channel locks to be able to get to that. Alright, now here's my O-ring that I was just telling you about to make sure that you get it. And sometimes the water pressure will actually, when you open this up, will push it out with the water and it'll land on the ground. Sometimes it comes off with the screw, but you definitely want to make sure that you look for this to prevent you from having leaks when you try to put everything back together in the spring. Same goes for the one under here. There's the O-ring that just came off the other drain plug. I can put the pump basket back on. Sometimes it's easier, again, if you're limited on space, just to take this off to be able to reach those hard to get places. And then this is a good time to go ahead and clean your pump basket out uh, if you hadn't done so for the season. You can see it's a few leaves and stuff like that in here. You can rinse it out with a hose if you need to. Okay, the last one that we're going to do is the plug that's on the bottom side of the sand filter. So let's go to the back side and get that one. Okay, now, the last plug that we need to worry about getting off is the plug that's on the bottom of your sand filter. You know, if, you might need to invest in a pair of channel locks because sometimes uh, these things are a little bit snug, especially after running them and being under pressure all year. So I've already broken this one loose. Okay, now, this one does not have an O-ring. You know, it just seals like a cap. And... And like I said, so you, you want to let all this water drain. And if you do this in ample time uh, before the winter hits, you know, all the sand and everything, the moisture that's in the tank, most of it should be uh, pretty dry and you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the sand freezing and cracking your sand filter. Now, if you live in the extreme northeast uh, or somewhere where it gets really, really cold and stays cold for long periods of time, you may want to take your sand filter and your pump and uh, bring them inside the garage or the basement and store them for the year. We live in Virginia, so I've always just left mine uh, sitting out all season and I've never had a problem. 
All right, the next thing that uh, we're going to do is we're going to uh, tackle the, the filter. And one other thing, your multiport valve here, you'll actually want to put the setting. There's a setting here for winterize. So you want to make sure that you twist that around, put it in winterize, and that leaves the chamber open. And uh, so uh, we're all done right here. So let's go get the winter cover. One last thing that you'll need to do before you put the winter cover on is if your pool has an underwater light like the one right here that clips over the side of the wall, you want to definitely take the light off uh, before you know you go ahead and put the cover on. And then if you have a walk-in step or a ladder, then you, uh, now's the time that you want to go ahead and take the, the step or ladder out of the pool. So usually that takes about at least two people because like with mine, it was a 50 pound sandbag in the bottom of the step that keeps it weighted down. So uh, two people's good because you need that extra pressure on the winter cover anyway, all right? Okay, if you've got a winter cover like the one we've got here, uh, this a tarp type cover and it comes with a uh, plastic coated uh, metal wire and with a little uh, turnbuckle. Um, what you want to do, uh, the easiest way to do this is to uncoil because the, the wire comes all tightly bound. You want to uncoil the wire uh, so you don't have any kinks in it. And uh, the easiest thing to do is thread it through one of the holes here and, and have that person that's helping you put the cover on. Let them start working the wire around that side. You start yours around this side and it's real easy. You know, you start, you come up through the grommet you get to the next one, you go down. Then you come up and down. So you're weaving it up and down uh, through these grommets uh, all the way around. And if, if you've got about half the wire going in both different directions, uh, by the time you meet around on the opposite end of the cover, uh, you should have a, uh, about an equal amount of the, the cable left to tie up, you know, like we've done here. So. And then also we folded the cover. We've laid it out in the yard and, and then we folded it in half. So you'll see once we start putting the cover on uh, how we can slide it up on the pool, walk it to one end and then unfold it. And it makes it a lot easier than trying to wrestle, you know, like for this pool is 1833, you know, 35 feet of cover, uh, especially if there's any wind blowing. And that's another suggestion. If they're calling for high winds, I wouldn't attempt to put the winter cover on that day because uh, you, it'll parachute on you and you'll be fighting the cover and you'll need six people to help you instead of two. So anyway, the wind's starting to get up a little bit here now, so we're going to try to get this cover on real quick for you. Okay, once your winter cover's on and you're trying to secure the cable down to tighten it up, you want to make sure that the cable is falling uh, below uh, the cap here so it's good and secure. And then what you'll do is uh, this ratchet, you'll feed one end of your cable through the hole on this end and then there's a hole here on the ratchet handle that actually uh, causes it to tighten up. And then you'll feed the opposite end of the cable through this hole. And again, through, through this middle hole right here. And then you'll uh, pull them tight on both ends. And then you start cranking clockwise on here. It's got a little locking mechanism on here. That, that clocks and it'll click and you can hear it and you know it doesn't have to be super tight you know like a guitar string you know I mean you want it good and snug and uh, and you can just go around and feel it all the way around to make sure uh, that it's tight all the way around and one other little tip that I can give you if uh, you live in an area where it has actually a lot of winds or you or the call for high winds what you can do is you can take just gallon uh, milk jugs, plastic milk jugs, fill them about half to three quarters uh, with water, get a little short bungee strap and run it through the, the handle on the milk jug and hang one end of it on this grommet 
one end on the other and it will just kind of hang and put tension on that cover because every once in a while uh, we get the wind blowing from this direction on that cover and it'll actually get up under the cover and cause the parachute we've had you know winter covers rip you know cause damage on the uprights and everything else so you know i think on this pool i usually end up hanging about uh, five two on each side and, and or six and two on the end just a little bit of extra you know just to hold that cover down okay all right i hope that today's video is going to help uh for you that have uh called in with questions about you know what do i need to do to winterize or close my pool um i think we covered just about everything uh if we didn't uh you know feel free to give us a call on at 1-800-986-0748 we'd be happy to answer any questions and look for a video this spring on how to open your pool have a great day